The Botswana International University of Science and Technology's research mission is to undertake, promote and facilitate research and scholarly investigations. The Buist vision is to be a premier research-based university of science, engineering and technology internationally recognized for the quality and excellence of its teaching and learning, research and innovation as well as engagement. The Faculty of Sciences at Buist is a research and teaching engine room focused on shaping the future through exploring and pushing the boundaries of knowledge in the classroom, laboratory and the field. For a student who wants to get a degree in geology, you need to be prepared to spend four years in Buist. Of course, you need to pass your BGCSE with good credits in maths, physics and chemistry. Because we emphasize with that, because the need for you to understand the basics of science because geology is an application. If you are not strong in maths, physics and chemistry, then you are going to struggle through your curriculum. For environmental science, yes, they need not too much mathematics, but they still need physics and chemistry in order to understand mostly climate change, atmospheric science and all the rest. So we offer modules in that at undergraduate and graduate level. We have a good intake of graduate students. We have graduated about six MSc holders. Currently, we have about five PhD students, four in geology, one in environmental science. And then we have about a total combined MSc students of about 30, both for geology and environmental science. So our department is uh, quite an attractive center, for, especially for graduate students because we do receive a huge number of applications for graduate studies. Some will end up turning back because of we need people with good grades to enroll to our graduate studies. Because we need to upgrade the manpower in the country above just BAC holders, but to graduate level in order to be able to contribute to the knowledge economy. The setup of the courses in our department, we have what we call the Industrial Advisory Board. So we involve industry in developing our curriculum. So the industry comes with what are their needs or what are the trends of employment, what type of graduates do they require. So therefore we are in close touch with industry and the directors look, this is the modern way to go and this is the way to do things. So therefore most of our graduates by the time they live here, they have a good rapport with the industry, they know where they can go. And the industry also know the quality of the product we are producing. The person does not arrive as a first time person and they are kind of shocked because they are part of the curriculum. Both the development and the modernizing of the curriculum and even delivery of some of the uh, modules will get the industrial group involved in it. Abuse is structured in such a way that uh, we run what we call problem-based learning. So we need uh, a lot of facilities. Students learn by doing. So it's a learning you experience. You don't just sit in the class and all that. So the emphasis is more on practical. And that is why, as you'll be going through our labs later, you will see that our labs are well equipped. I can boast that uh, I can compete with any university in the world in terms of lab facilities. That is what the government of Botswana has invested into my department. At postgraduate level, the department offers master's and doctoral degree programs with opportunities to specialize in aqueous and environmental geochemistry, Igneous and metamorphic petrology, applied geophysics, structural geology and tectonics, sedimentology and stratigraphy, to mention a few. A sedimentologist pointed out one of the researches they are engaged in in relation to drought and research. We studied the Nutwane Dam, you know the dam in Gabs, and the outcomes. Um, were of course uh, presented in international conferences uh, and in uh, international uh, peer review journals. But what we've done, we allocated uh, a certain amount of money to go and uh, visit different hotels. We went to Ramutsua, where the, the Paramount chief has welcomed us uh, uh, very warmly. There were like uh, more than 80 um, uh, citizen of the city of Ramutz and surrounding. We went to Lobatze, we went to Odna Lady, and all the communities are living around the uh, Haborone Dam. And we presented our data. Um, what we actually did, we asked our students 
uh, to present the scientific data in Setswana so that everybody was able to understand and we engaged with the people and at the same time we invited even uh, policymakers, uh, uh, politicians uh, and uh, uh, technicians from the government that were not just uh, reading our very boring technical reports but they were giving a feedback not from us but, but the population huh? so and that was very exciting we are planning to do it uh, um, with the new project uh, which is called connect for um, uh, because we are trying to connect physical uh, um, parameters uh, very scientific stuff with the social problem so we have a budget to go around in the Limpopo, so in the four countries, Mozambique, Zimbabwe, South Africa and Botswana, and talk to people, tell them uh, what we found out uh, and uh, listen to what are their problems, because most of the time uh, these people are not listening. So, and then once we collect all this data, we're going to put together scientific data and um, the outcome of our social. So I think that is quite important, especially because this type of project is relevant. Uh, every one of us is in, this, in this part of the world is affected by drought and floods. Geophysics is important because it provides mechanism and tool to probe the deeper subsurface and it is good when you want to find a precursor and identify anomaly in data. Buist, through its researchers, are geographically and geophysically assisting members of the public from all walks of the country. Well, at BUST, we believe uh, that research without product or research that doesn't affect the man on the street uh, basically has little impact. So at the Earth and Environmental Science Department, uh, we try our utmost, or rather, uh, we try by all means uh, to do community-based uh, research or to engage the community in our research here. So, for example, myself, uh, I'm quite active on that regard. Uh, I've been doing projects in the central districts here. I've done one project in Shakhe with the VDC there to, uh, to more or less study the, the soil properties because they were engaged in they were engaged in building of a seed storage facility. Uh, so because the soils there are quite problematic, these are clays, uh, we had to take the soils, do some analysis of the soils, then give recommendations on how the building should actually be structured. How deep should the foundation be? What kind of infill or backfill materials needs to be used and so on and so forth. I've also done some project in Simuapula Simapula is, is actually notorious for, for erosion. There's a lot of erosion going on there. Uh, and this erosion more or less affects people daily uh, because it cracks roads, it cracks houses. Uh, so me and my team set out uh, to study what's the cause of this erosion. How can this erosion be mitigated? Uh, so we, we are more or less focused on the underlying problem as scientists. Then after that, we do some recommendations to the engineers who then um, can do exactly what we, we told them to do. Buist prides itself with having globally recognized state-of-the-art equipment that allows for ease of research. Uh, this is our geophysics storeroom and we have state-of-the-art equipment here, commonly used for mineral exploration. Uh, all our equipment here, they need precise location of where we are exactly. So we have GPS in every equipment here. Like this white thing here is a GPS for this one. Uh, and even that what is in there, that's a GPS. So for the other for other equipment, we have this um, GPSs. They then we will be surveying on a line and then they pick precise locations of where we exactly doing the investigations. Um, that one is a seismic system. This is a seismic source. We send vibrations into the ground using the seismic source here. And then the reflected signals will be picked by the geophones. Do you know the chemical purity of your materials? Trace elemental analysis can tell you. Determining trace and ultra trace level chemical impurities 
either with or without a full elemental survey analysis can address such a question. Even better, Buist is equipped to address that even better. I operate this instrument, it's called inductive coupled plasma mass spectrometer or in short ICPMS. We analyze the heavy metals from soils, air and water. We prepare the samples downstairs and then we come and do the heavy transition elements and all other elements that are we need here, the major and transition elements, we analyze them here using this instrument. This instrument is very good for research also because it gives you precise and the detection limit is very, very low when you use this instrument. This is one of other equipment that we use to do our analysis uh, in uh, rock samples or soil samples or water. This equipment here is called ICP OES. Uh, it mostly it used for analyzing trace elements. So we use the equipment to uh, analyze trace elements, uh, both in water and in uh, rock samples. So we crush the, the rock samples in the, our preparation room here, uh, downstairs. Then we break the samples here uh, to uh, see the concentrations of those elements on uh, the samples. So uh, this is the, this equipment mostly is automatic, uh, it's automated. So uh, it can run up to, uh, up to more than 60, uh, 60 uh, uh, samples per, per day. You just uh, uh, put your samples here, then you leave them to, to run. So it uses a uh, gas, uh, that is the, the argon. This is an FTIR uh, spectrometer. So it basically, me it, it, it basically measures the sun. Uh, and then uh, it uses this, this is a camera, it's a camp tracker. And this camera tracks the sun. And it basically measures the, the intensity of, of trace gases. Trace gases are, we talk about your water vapors, your carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide. And this uh, water vapors, uh, this, this trace gases, they are displayed in spectra, spect spectra range. And I use softwares in this computer to capture those spectral ranges. Um, so there are different spectral ranges uh, from 600 to around um, 1,500 nanometers. And within this range, we find different spectrometers for, uh, for both uh, water vapor and then uh, for methane and then for carbon dioxide. The Botswana International University of Science and Technology, or BUIST, was at the just-ended HRDC Fair. Their strategy was outlined by their Acting Director of Registration Services, Mr. Donna Lekwate. BUIST was founded uh, primarily to be a catalyst in assisting the country to move away from a mineral-dependent economy. Uh, towards more than just um, the mining economy. And the programs that we have have been picked specifically to help assist diversify the country's uh, economy. Um, within us here we have departments such as biological sciences, biotechnology, we have computer science and information systems, we have materials and metallurgical engineering. We also have decided to bring in uh, academics to come and demonstrate the research and innovation that uh, we are doing as a university. This in line with the theme of the HRDC Fair um, of being, of diversif being the gateway towards diversifying the country's economy. So the programs that we have here and the interaction that we have with our uh, prospective students are meant to give an opportunity um, for our prospective students to have an insight into what the teaching entails, into what student life and views entails, as well as the kind of opportunities that one um, can have once they've completed their degrees with us. One of the key issues we raise when we interact with our prospective students is that we want them to see the degrees that we offer as a vehicle towards addressing a problem that they can relate to in their communities. 
This could be mechanical and energy engineering, which they could use to go into areas such as renewable energy, given that it is a well-known fact that uh, coal-powered uh, production of electricity will soon give way to renewable energy. It could be areas such as computer science, where we know the world currently is moving towards automation. And moving towards automation, programming is a key aspect of that. Um, this could be civil and environmental engineering. The mining, minerals, energy and water resources sector has been the biggest contributor to the country's economy for years. This simply means opportunities for employment continue to grow with more prospecting and surveys being undertaken, expansions of mining projects, new mining projects beneficiation of minerals and improved value chain benefits. Electrical and electronics engineers work primarily in research and development industries. To become one, Dr. Bokani Mtengi, lecturer at Buist with the Electrical and Electronics Engineering Department, will explain more with examples of what else one can invent. Um, today I brought with you a smart uh, home, uh, electronic, a smart home security system. So this system will enable you to control your electrical appliances at home, meaning you'll be able to lock your sockets, your lights, your electrical appliances, and monitor your electricity consumption. Why do we think this is an important project? Because we are moving towards diversifying the economy of Botswana. So if we, um, if we give our students this, such skills like these, they'll be able to graduate knowing how to design certain products that they can sell in Botswana, they can sell outside Botswana, they can also create jobs for other Botswana. So this is where we're moving to smart technology. I will say we need more engineers in our country. That's the only way we can move towards diversifying the economy. We need more students who can manufacture design things here at home and then be able to sell that technology outside. Right now we are buying technology, we are buying products from outside and that's taking away from the money that could be used here at home. So please encourage those students to come and um, apply. We need more engineers. So engineering as we all know, well, a student has to be good in maths, mathematics. You really cannot run away from that. You have to be good in your physics, chemistry, and biology. Biology is for the biomedical engineers. So these students, they really need to have passed their sciences, they need to have passed uh, their mathematics, and then of course we need English and other courses. So you have to be good with our computers, because a lot of our designs, we start with simulation using software engineering first, before you can move on to the actual device. You really cannot just start by wiring things, no. You start with the software design, it gives you a theoretical idea of where you are going. If the simulation works, then you move to, to the design, which is what we call the hardware. So these kids, they have to know how to program using pro different programming languages. C, C+, Java, Python, all of those. They need to be good at that. This is the Department of Chemical, Materials and the Metallurgical Engineering. Uh, this department offers two engineering degrees, one, one as Bachelor in Chemical Engineering and the other one as a Bachelor in Materials and Metallurgical Engineering. Um, the project that we are, we are exhibiting today, we have one from chemical engineering, which is the manufacturing of uh, soap. And this soap here, this is a locally made soap. It was made from cow fat. And these are the work of students. One of the things is this as a vision to empower people so that they can use locally sourced material to produce what we want locally. So this is part of what we teach our students in chemical engineering. In terms of uh, materials and the metallurgical engineering, this has got a lot of coal as you can see, and in coal you can have a lot of energy generated from coal. For example, we can actually get petrol from coal. Most of the other companies that have petroleum, they have petroleum in the liquid form, in the natural state. But here we have coal in the solid state. So if we take coal and we burn it at high temperature, we call the process pyrolysis. From there we get with the crude oil, like those one that those one extract, and from this crude oil, the chemical engineers, they can use the process of fractional distillation to get the other fuels like aviation fuel, paraffin, uh, kerosene, even our uh, petrol. So it is when you distill this, this is the crude one. This is like the one they extract from 
all those oil producing companies. This is what they give you. They have it in liquid, but because we have coal, we can get this. See? From the raw material to the product to the finished goods. From the raw material to the finished goods. Already we have the knowledge. Already the government is procuring equipment that will facilitate the transfer of knowledge to the student. So it's a lot, but we can do more. So that is why we are inviting students that has got 38 points and above to come to BUS, get the form register, and come and see what we have to offer them. My name is Sundre Tabawasi from the Department of Computer Science and Information Systems. We are here at the HRDC Fair, and um, we are trying to recruit the best students who have interest in the latest technologies. So in our department, we offer two programs, which is computer science and software engineering, as well as information systems and data management. So the reason why I feel students need to opt for our programs is because um, the industry has had an input into the curriculum that we offer. So we don't just develop it ourselves. We have consulted different stakeholders and they have looked at our previous curriculum. They have reviewed it so that it matches the current market demands in the field of technology. So we have specialized areas like cybersecurity, data science, health informatics, and artificial intelligence. So our computer science encompasses uh, different modules from those aspects. And in terms of research, we are trying to instill research into the undergraduate programs. We already have research in postgraduate programs, so we have these projects that we give to our final year students. On your final year of computer science, you choose to either do a research project or a, a development project, so that we groom, we groom them while they are still at, a, at an early stage. You know, the president always talks about a knowledge-based economy. So instead of us relying on these minerals, we are trying to use our knowledge to dive. We do have the fields that I talked about, cybersecurity, we have fields of artificial intelligence, ontologies, we have e-learning, we have mobile learning, all these different areas, we do have research uh, in, in, in those aspects.